If you're a fan of Halo, you probably remember the glory days when Bungie used to make the Halo games. And whether you like Halo 4 or Halo 5, there's no denying that there's definitely something special of the Bungie era, or just the passion that Bungie had and the small attention to detail they constantly put into their games. And after the completion of Halo Reach, Bungie went on to work with Activision on developing and publishing Destiny and Destiny 2. And while during the early years, it really seemed like Bungie was trying to distance itself from Halo in any way that they could, and maybe that was under the influence of Activision, it seems like Bungie more recently has made it a point to break free from feeling like they can't reference their own games that they made back in the day. And Bungie's always known for hiding easter eggs here and there throughout their entire gaming career. Back in Halo 3 ODST, they had posters up that promoted Destiny, and even in Reach, they had a poster up that served as the actual map that would be in the full on Destiny game. But when Bungie finally did leave Halo and Microsoft and started development on the Destiny games, they hid a lot of easter eggs along the way that pull an interesting homage to Halo, and we wanted to talk about that in today's video. And while most of these come from Destiny 2 and the DLCs that have come out afterwards, there are a few small references to Halo in the first Destiny game as well. One of the more popular ones that circulated around the release of Destiny was the fact that there was a building on Mars that resembled the Master Chief. Now a lot of people say that this is just a coincidence and that it doesn't look like the Master Chief, but honestly I don't know how you can possibly say that, especially knowing how Bungie pays a really close attention to detail in their level designs. There were so many things hidden throughout the Halo universe that obviously were intentional, and honestly this feels like a good way to make a nod to the Halo fans while maybe not necessarily acknowledging Halo when they're trying to produce and promote a new IP. Also in Destiny Destiny 1, there was a rare exotic sniper that honestly resembled the sniper rifle from Halo, and it shot and sounded like the sniper rifle from Halo, which makes us think that this was their attempt to make a weapon that at least felt familiar to the legendary sniper from the Halo series. In the Destiny 1 Taken King expansion, there's actually a reference to the Master Chief directly in the story. There's a section of the level where you see a bunch of cryopods, and your ghost even makes a reference to a past guardian from the Last War who said that he would prefer to sleep as the Last War was enough for a thousand lifetimes. It definitely is paying a reference to the Master Chief and just the fact that Halo was the last war they had worked on before moving to Destiny. The Master Chief started in the cryopod and ended in the cryopod as far as the Halo games that Bungie made were concerned, definitely serves as a really cool reference that they put in here. In Destiny 2, we start to see even more references to Halo hidden about. In one of these sections, there is a canyon called Gulch that actually somewhat resembles the Blood Gulch from the original Halo game. It's a little bit wider and there's this extra section in the top part of it, but you can easily see where the bases would have been. On one side, there's a lake where the base normally would have been, and on the other side, there is a rock representing where the base would have been. It doesn't necessarily exactly look like the Blood Gulch unless you're looking at it the right way and you're looking for it, then you can easily see the similarities in where some of the rock placements are, where some of the trees are, and you can even imagine where other features that were popular in Blood Gulch would have been. Tie that with the fact that there's this really interesting and elegant cave system that, while it's not identical to Blood Gulch, it's still paying homage to the fact that there were caves hidden away in that legendary canyon. In the Forsaken expansion, if you go to a specific cave wall and you look at the wall long enough and you look at it from the right angle, there's actually a small reference to Halo 3 ODST, which has a symbol that really looks reminiscent to the Virgil symbol that was all around the walls of New Mombasa back when ODST first released. So this likely is a nice nod 
nod to that, especially because they put another major Halo Easter egg in the Forsaken expansion. In the Forsaken expansion, there's actually this section with a huge puzzle, and if you can figure out the puzzle, you will instantly die. But then upon respawning from instantly dying, every enemy that you kill will shoot confetti out of their bodies and make a really interesting squealing noise. Now this is an obvious reference to Grunt's birthday party, which was a skull that was in Halo 3 and other Halo games as well, where whenever you shot the heads of Grunt's, it would explode, shooting confetti out and having children yelling yay. It definitely was a fan favorite and became a staple in the Halo franchise to just have in the games, and it's very, very obvious that this is a nod directly to this legendary joke and ongoing gag that they had put in their games all of those years ago. Another nod that they put to Halo Reach is that they actually put in a secret dance club, which a lot of people think that this is just a fun Destiny Easter egg, and in a way it is, but in Halo Reach, Bungie did this another time where they had a secret building where there was a dance club of Brutes and other Covenant dancing to some Halo music. In this one, we see a very similar setup with a DJ and other enemies dancing around, and it's just kind of a cool reference not only to Destiny, but also to another easter egg they did years ago. If you play through the Ace of Spades quest, you'll actually have the character Cade leave you a message for the Guardian which says you have always been the strong and silent type, which is possibly a major reference to Halo 3 ODST, which is something that Mickey says to the rookie in the intro sequence before they drop. And if you think this one is a stretch, it is a pretty iconic line from Halo 3 ODST and even was resurfaced as an achievement when the Master Chief Collection came out called the Strong Silent Type where you had to assassinate three brutes in a row. So it's kind of one of those iconic lines that exist in the Halo universe. So it's a really neat reference that Bungie put in, acknowledging one of the last games they made before they left Halo. This next one is one of my personal favorites, but when you are playing through Destiny 2, there's actually a room that is exactly reminiscent and almost identical looking to the layout from one of the rooms in Cairo Station, which is the first level in Halo 2. If you can see, there is definitely an open section where the windows would have been, and there's different hangar parts that completely resemble the same layout. It's nothing that was necessarily in your face, and it does look different if you look at it from a different angle, but as you walk through it, you'll see that the similarities are no way coincidental, and it's a really cool reference to make to Halo, and just kind of another nod for the fans that have stuck with Bungie all of these years later. But honestly, these were just some of our favorite Easter eggs that we had seen so far when we were looking through just some references that we were hoping that we would see along the way. There's some more Destiny 2 references that easily could be direct callbacks to Halo, whether it's the way that certain enemy classes look or the way that they move around feeling reminiscent to things that we'd experienced in Halo, and at the same time you can either say that's a Halo reference or it's just a testament to how Bungie likes to make their AIs work, but whenever you play through games games made by Bungie, you can always see some sort of callback in just the way that the levels feel or the way the enemies feel when you fight against them. There's also a lot of guns that people have claimed are reminiscent or paid homage to past guns that Bungie had put in their Halo games, whether it's pistols that have low recoil or only vertical recoil, or just guns that seem to pay small nods to the assault rifle or other guns along the way. Bungie's paid really close attention to the details in Destiny and Destiny 2, and we really appreciate that. While they did pivot quite a bit, and Activision definitely had messed up a lot of things that Bungie had going for them with Destiny, it still seems like the team of people who took so much care in making great Halo games still exists back there somewhere in the development side of Destiny and Destiny 2, and we're optimistic that now that Bungie has their freedom from Activision and are going to proceed forward as a publishing company, that we're going to see even more references and see more of that Bungie feeling and that Bungie storytelling that they developed all those years ago start to come back even more. But that's just our thoughts. Did we miss any major Halo Easter eggs that you had noticed along the way? We'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to subscribe to Rocket Sloth for more videos just like this. And real quick, Luke and I are really giving Destiny 2 another shot, especially since its new DLC is coming out and the game's moving to free-to-play 
soon. We've seen so many similarities more recently to how the Halo games back in the day play, and it's been a lot of fun to play. So if you guys are looking for a crew to play with, or you just want to show us some cool things in Destiny, maybe check out our Discord or follow us on Twitter at Rocket Elijah or at Rocket Sloth Luke. And our Discord, of course, there's a link in the description. All right, guys, that's it for today. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Thank you.